What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, I'm SC Chirp, and today I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on Guild Wars 2. If you're looking for World of Warcraft or specifically Mist of Pandaria content, make sure to head over to my channel where you can find a lot of videos regarding that. This video is specifically about Guild Wars 2, and I'm going to be breaking it up in different sections. Environment and graphics, character creation, combat and controls, leveling and questing, and PvP. Feel free to skip to any section just by clicking the one that you're most interested in. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is going to be environment and graphics, and I have to say right off the bat, the graphics are pretty incredible. Um, it's not just that the graphics are kind of top-notch, it's also that the world feels really well designed. It doesn't feel like um, just another video game. The world feels like something that could be uh, realistic. Of course there's some sci-fi type stuff in there, but the world is so well designed. It flows together so well um, that it just it's actually fun just to run around and find new things on the map that you haven't seen before. Um, and like I just said, it just all runs together so well. So the colors are brilliant. Um, everything about the graphics and the environments great. I've had a lot of fun just running around exploring, um, swimming. Swimming is something that's actually a lot of fun in this game. I know in um, at least MMOs, swimming is always something that a lot of players, a lot of players seem to really dread. Um, and it doesn't seem to be the case in this because underwater combat is great, swimming in general is fun, and there's just a lot of awesome stuff to see under the water. Whereas with most games, you, you don't really find anything exciting underwater. That's not the case in this game. Um, so underwater questing or underwater leveling in general um, should be a lot of fun in this game uh, if there is a lot of that um, like I said just overall world is great um, have to give it an A plus for environment and graphics graphics could be a little bit better but I think for the huge scale PvP that they're doing um, they don't want to go you know too over the top with them so overall uh, have to give environment and graphics an A plus all right moving on to the second part uh, it's gonna be character creation and let me just go ahead and put it out there that I honestly think that the character creation could be a little bit better. Um, I don't really have any major complaints about it, it's just that I have played a lot of MMOs over the past 10 to 12 years and I have seen games that have slightly better character creation. Um, it's not to say that I have any major complaints or anything, but again I have seen slightly better. Um, with that being said, I don't really have any major complaints on it. Just there's a few small things, some of the hair doesn't seem like the textures are very high res or anything, especially that's definitely the case with the Asura. And that's what you can actually see me making right now on screen is Nasura. Human and Norn have some really great hairstyles. Um, they do seem to share quite a few of the same ones, um, which is a little bit disappointing, but nothing major. Overall though, like the facial detail and things that you can give your characters is really great. There's a lot of games where you have tons of adjustments that you can make on your character's face, but none of those adjustments seem to make a difference. You can slide those little bars up and down, and it seems like it doesn't actually affect anything really not the case in Guild Wars 2 where every option does seem to make pretty drastic changes. So character creation, like I said, I've seen better out there, but overall I am pretty pleased with how Guild Wars 2 decided to do it. Alright, moving on to part 3, which is going to be combat, which is for a lot of you going to be the most important part of the game. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of PvE combat to show you guys because in this last beta I really did almost no PvE, um, but for... so I'll, I'll just show you guys some PvP. Um, the combat is so much fun. Um, it's really dynamic. It's really active as opposed to some games where you can just stand in one place, push buttons, and not really have to think about movement or anything. Um, and that's not the case in this. There's active dodging. The skills, as far as like defensive cooldowns, really have to be used at uh, precise times, uh, or you're just not going to make it very far. So, again, the combat is very dynamic. It's very active. There's not going to be a lot of dull moments where you just feel like you're just sit there. You're just sitting there, mindlessly pushing the same rotation over and over and over. The spell effects are really great. You can see a couple of these in this clip. Um, just how great a lot of the spell effects look. Some people have complained that they're a little bit overdone. I honestly think that could be an issue in like world versus world PvP, or maybe in dungeons where space is somewhat limited. But I would rather see the effects too big than be, you know, kind of not impressive at all. But overall, spell effects are really nice. I think they're done just about the way that they should be. Controls, in general, movement, jumping, swimming, <laughs> everything is really nice. It feels like the controls are really tight and there's a lot of games out there, especially a lot of MMOs that kind of um, suffer because their controls are less than perfect. And Guild Wars 2 really has kind of hit the nail on the head with the controls. They just feel tight, everything's really responsive, uh, it doesn't feel like anything 
could really be improved as far as control goes. So I was actually really uh, impressed in the whole controls department. So overall for combat and controls, um, I really do like the way that Guild Wars 2 is going with that. Alright, the fourth thing we're going to be talking about is leveling and questing. Uh, and I've got to say, with a level cap of 80, um, ArenaNet really has to find a way to make questing not feel so... Um, grindy and I think they've actually done that with this game and it is true while other games like World of Warcraft currently have a level cap of 85 and it's soon to be level 90 um, most people aren't brand new to World of Warcraft most people have been playing it for years and they already have high level characters with a nude game having a level cap um, at 80 kind of in my opinion could be dangerous if it's not done the right way and I feel like ArenaNet has done it really well. Leveling doesn't seem like it does in other games. You don't go out and pick up 10 quests and go complete those quests and then uh, you know get a little bit of EXP and move on to the next NPC that's going to give you 10 more quests. In fact a lot of other games don't even feel like quests. You get like a little task to take a bucket over a hill for an NPC that's just too lazy to do it himself. Um, and you know in my opinion that doesn't really seem like quests. And the way that Guild Wars 2 does it, quests actually do seem like you're actually doing something to help the NPC that you're talking to. So I like that part of it. That's not the only way to get experience in this game though. You've also got dynamic events, which are like these huge events that are going on in the zone. There's going to be lots of players that are participating, and you get experience that way. You get experience just from exploring the map in general, from finding waypoints, from finding vistas, things like that. Um, so there's just a lot of ways to actually get experience, and there also doesn't feel like... It, at least for me, it doesn't seem like I need to hit level 80 right away. It seems like I, I can take my time, um, play the game as I want, and kind of explore and you know do the things that I want to do to level. So that's something, again, that's a huge uh, plus, at least in my book. Um, so again, leveling and questing feels, it, it's totally different. It is a completely different system, and I think for a lot of players, it's going to be very hard to adapt. To the new system at least until you get to around level 15 or 20 or so uh, but I think overall a lot of people a lot of people are going going to enjoy the change um, because it certainly is different from most other types of systems in other games so again I'm definitely looking forward to you know getting my first character up to level 80 okay and last but definitely not least at least for myself and probably most of you let's talk about PvP um, I could probably talk about the PvP in Guild Wars 2 for a good 30 minutes, no problem, but for the sake of this video's length, I'm going to try to keep it somewhat short. I really don't even know where to begin for the PvP because there's just so much to talk about, um, but bottom line, the PvP is fun. Uh, I did it all weekend, literally all this last beta event weekend, and not one second of that weekend was I bored or anything. It's just exciting non-stop. One of my biggest, uh, one of the things I like the most about the PvP is that it's really skill based. And it's not to say that skill doesn't factor in in a lot of other games, uh, but it just does so much more so with this game. And the reason why I say that is because things like defensive, your defensive cooldowns, those actually matter. You have to use those at precise, you know, just at the perfect time. And I mentioned this in the combat part of the video, but in PvP, that's obviously just that much more important. Everyone has their own heal, everyone has defensive cooldowns, everyone can dodge. And what that means is no one's just going to be getting Im immediately blown up. And there's not going to be anything like one-shotting or just killing someone in a single stun lock or anything like that. At least not in the current state of the game. So that is something that I really like to see. One reason why is because it just makes people who are new to the game, it gives them a chance. It doesn't mean that they're going to go into a battleground and just automatically get destroyed just because they've never played the game. So again, the game is very skill based, so people who are just naturally good gamers are going to do well in the game naturally. Um, something else I really like, and probably most of you guys are already aware of this, is that gear doesn't matter in this game like it does other games. Gear has stats, but it doesn't give you any kind of huge advantage over anyone you're fighting. The reason why they do this is just because that's the way Guild Wars 1 did it and it, it makes it overall a better, more competitive, more balanced scene. So someone who already has a lot of time and experience playing this game isn't going to have that advantage over you plus just the advantage that he has much better gear than you which gives you absolutely no fighting chance against him. So again, uh, the fact that um, gear doesn't give you any kind of advantage uh, is really huge. Now, the gear will make you look like a complete badass. That is the the, the main thing about the uh, the gear in this game is 
higher tier gear, harder to obtain gear, just looks much better there. Um, but you're not going to find like overwhelmingly better stats on harder to obtain gear. I really don't know what else to say other than in, in the beta there were three maps um, that you could play on. They were all like King of the Hill type maps and they're all three so well designed. Um, they feel like real areas rather than battlegrounds. It just feels like you're in an area and you're fighting for that area. So there was out of the three maps there was not like any of them that I didn't like just as much as the other maps. I liked all three of them equally. They were just as fun as the other ones. Which is definitely not the case for other games that I've done a lot of PvPing in where you see a particular battleground and you just kind of want to AFK out of it because you hate it so much. I don't think that's going to be the case in this game. So again, I, I can't really think of many negative things to say about the PvP. And it's not like I've done it a whole lot yet. It's only It was only one weekend. But it was a lot of fun. And I'm a long time Guild Wars 1 fan. Uh, I've already mentioned in this video, but I have been playing MMOs for so long and but this actually does feel revolutionary. It feels completely different from any other PvP experience I've ever had. And uh, I really enjoy it. And I think most of you guys, if not everyone who plays uh, Guild Wars 2, is really going to enjoy the PvP. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap this video up. Um, I do want to encourage you guys, if you if you haven't you know, considered Guild Wars 2, you're a diehard uh, World of Warcraft fan, at least give Guild Wars 2 a chance. I'm going to be playing both of them. you got to remember, Guild Wars 2 has no monthly subscription fee. So you can definitely you know, pick up Guild Wars 2 and play it right alongside Miss of Pandaria, just like I'm going to be doing. So if you haven't given it a chance, I hope this video has maybe um, kind of shed some light on the game for you and you will at least consider picking it up when it comes out. Um, but I do want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like the video for me. It does help my channel out tremendously. And as always, thanks for watching.